Welcome back to Usaifan Air Sport, Nai Superstars. The scores after game 3 are Crusaders at 5 and Yodhas at 6. Now comes the decider. The game is Dota 2. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Welcome back to you, Cypher, ladies and gentlemen. Crusaders will be taking on the Yodas today in round robin two of the first season. I'm Cloud X. With me is going to be Vivek, and the draft is already underway as the Earthshaker and the Doom will be banned out by Crusaders. Yodas Ten though, seconds go ahead and remaining. Ban out the Earth Spirit with the Tide Hunter. <laughs> we saw this coming from a mile away. Five Tide Hunter seconds with Usa remaining. Spectre. These are the top three picks at you, Cypher, this season, and rightly so. It's been working. Yeah. Uh, couple of things that stand out uh, in Ucypher as a whole is that a lot of teams have come with a single-minded approach to the game. Teams that can adapt, such as the Yakshas and the Yodas, are the ones that go forward. Um, this time around, the Crusaders don't get their hands on the Tide Hunter, but I'm worried that adapting here might just equal picking up the Medusa or the Spectre, which have normally been banned out. So Medusa, Spectre, Night Stalker, all three heroes that are really highly valued in this, in this season of the league are still in the pool. I'd like to see Crusaders ban out at least one of them over here, but now they have an opportunity to play these mind games. Or rather, Yodas has the opportunity to play mind games. If there's three potent heroes, Crusaders has the first pick, Yodas has the next two. So it's in Yodas' best interest to make sure that none of those picks are banned out. So they get two out of three, while Crusaders is left taking just one out of three. But that is all assuming that Yodas and Crusaders are on the exact same page when it comes to hero picking priority. Um, if they don't value the Night Stalker as much, that, that logic does not apply. If they don't value the Medusa or the Spectre, same scenario, they'll probably pick up something else. Slada is going to get banned, so Yodas still has an opportunity to pick up two out of three Dire high team heroes. Pick. I doubt they were going to go for Slada as their first pick. I mean, 11's not particularly shown prowess on the four position Slada. He's played a lot of Spirit Breaker, and that's something that might come in handy here as well. Right. Um, Dire team now, pick. Venom Mancer. are somewhat targeted towards Acme. <laughs> uh, the Earthshaker is what Acme's been playing when he's been taking Dire on the, team uh, the back. four position. Uh, I presume he also plays the Slada, and this is some uh, bit of information that the Crusaders are privy to. But Crusaders, they get their hand on one of the strongest foes in the game, the Night Stalker. While the others are going to open with the Venomancer and the Lich. Is okay. 10 seconds like remaining. Medusa got ignored completely and the Brewmaster comes up for Crusaders. So, basically, the flavor coming out on the main stage. Crusaders will pick up uh, something totally different. And honestly, it's, it's the way to go. Akramak showed a little bit of adaptations yesterday and it worked out beautifully for them. Crusaders. They can't stick to the old guns. They have to try and make something new happen. And Brewmaster's Dire a step in that direction. Yeah. That said, Radiant though, Brewmaster's team great back. versus heavy physical DPS cores. Venomance is one of those magic damage cores. And honestly, I'm not sure if uh, he's going to be too bothered by the drunken haze being tagged upon him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a hard lane if indeed the Venomancer is uh, going to the safe lane around. Ten seconds uh, remaining. Pretty much. Uh, 
heroes that are sending in the meta here remaining. and Usai for being that out the Spectre, the Medusa, Juggernaut is a trend of sorts and Crusaders is just going to remove that from the equation. I'm curious to see if Pacme is going to be playing the 5 or the 4 and if 11 is going to be playing the 4, what's he going to be playing? Now he's picked the Spirit Breaker in the past for himself, that's the only time he's played the 4 position, two times on the Spirit Breaker. He could go for the Spirit Breaker once more if he wishes to. And the uh, real issue that Yotas are going to face here is that Crusaders has a very run at you style of lineup yeah. with two extremely tanky team heroes. The Night Stalker is known to dive you under, his, under your tower within the first four minutes of the game or post the first four minutes of the game. And Brewmaster also posts that Blink Dagger is going to be looking to jump in and start the fight with the Thunderclap into a primal split. Yotas don't really have too many defensive layers. The Frost Armor is not particularly fantastic versus the Brewmaster. He does a fair bit of Ten damage with that uh, Fire Panda as well. Um, at the same time, I'm not sure Night Five will be seconds remaining. by a Lich being in the vicinity. Um, the Void does a fair bit of damage, his auto attacks, while well, they will do reduced damage and of course his attack speed will be slowed by the Frost Armor. It's not uh, the most scary proposition. And honestly, if Crusaders decides to run this as a mid Brewmaster and then even picks up a Darkseer on the side as their off lane, I, I feel like they've got an extremely aggressive uh, first 10 minutes going for themselves and something that completely steamroll Yodas. We also know that Crusaders likes to occasionally pick up the Gyrocopter. I'm wondering if this is a game for him. For the Gyrocopter? Yeah, perhaps a mid-gyro or something we'll see coming out from him. Okay. I am looking for Yudas to probably pick up their four position. I also think this is uh, somewhat a decent game to be a faceless void on the side of the Yudas. If they do want to pick it up for Kale. Kale has been known to run um, the Sand King and the Doom a lot in the offlane, but they could switch things up and uh, maybe pick up the Faceless Void all of a sudden. And um, right now, for now at least, uh, Crusaders don't seem to have the tools to deal with them in the offlane. Uh, yeah, I mean, one thing that they're severely lacking is Lockdown versus the Brewmaster. In the face of the Venom and the Lich, he's guaranteed to get the Primus played off. There's nothing yeah. to stop him there. You need to have a lot more lockdown or silences coming out on the side of Yodas. Whether that comes in the form of heroes with those abilities or whether it comes in the form of itemizations, it's something they'll have Radiant to keep in the back of their mind every step of the way they follow. Giant protector. As for Crusaders, Darshan is the one that usually runs their off laner, so I'm, I, I don't think I've seen him on the Brewmaster no, before. but he plays it. Pretty sure he does. Four Ten seconds that's what remaining. They're looking for. What's it going to be? It's going to be the train protector. Huh. Five so seconds remaining. It might remaining. be nighttime. The night stalker might be running at you, but you got ice armor as well as living armor to buff you up and keep you healthy. Yeah, now, this is a pick I can kind of get behind. Um, the roots, while not entirely reliable from the overgrowth, it's still a way to deal with the brewmaster and prevent him from popping that primal split. But yeah, more importantly, the living armor instances with the frost armor from the lich. It's, a, it's an absolute nightmare for the Night Stalker himself to go diving against these two abilities. And it's also the kind of uh, lineup that Yodas can sport when they want to try and make a turnaround happen in the early stages. Bait the Night Stalker in, um, give him a false sense of, of an assurity on that kill, and turn the fight around when the Venomancer slows, and maybe a TP rotation from a hero or two. They don't have too many stuns going for themselves, but they do have a truck ton of slows with the Frost Blast, Leech Seed, and the Venomous Scale. So, Yodas can control the team fight. Third pick for Crusaders. I don't think they were expecting this Dream Protector pick to come out, but one of the best ways to deal with the Dream is to have damage over time to take down his living armor instances quickly. The Lion doesn't really help that cause. Lion's a source of burst damage. The Lockdown coming out from the Earth Spike, that's also a single instance of damage. The Dream's living armor will soak some of it up. I'm not particularly a fan of this Lion Ten pick, but remaining. it's going to bring them a bit more control going into this fight. But now I'm a fan of it because this Five Luna pick, it's almost remaining. certainly going to have illusions alongside yep. it with the Manta. Lich, oh, sorry, Lion's fantastic at removing illusions. The Hex and the Mana Drain instantly dispel them. Dire team back. Fourth pick, Crusaders. What are they going to go with? I mean, at this point, they've got to know that Yodas has a push on their mind. It's going to be a straight up push with the Plague Wards and the Luna Illusions and Luna damage coming out onto those towers. Um, Yodas are looking for their off lane hero, which I assume should be a tempo Ten controller. Ten seconds remaining. Something with a little bit of lockdown. I'm, I've got to say, I'm a fan of the Sentry Five in this game. Five seconds the... remaining. For the Yodas? Uh huh. I prefer the Void also, but then you have huge cooldowns to work with. 
uh, the only thing with a somewhat reduced cooldown is the tree protector. You could do centaur as well. That's decent. He's, he's, his lane is going to be whatever, but yeah. So if the objective is to have something that lets you fight, I'd say the centaur fits the bill. Clockwork hasn't been banned either. If you Radiant want to the, team the clockwork, that could work. Um, Radiant if the objective is to push and to split push your farm, I think the, the nature's profit isn't half bad here at all. You'll also have uh, the possibility of an early Orchid coming out from the NP, which is great control versus yep. the Brewmaster and the Anti-Mage. But Crusaders have done something smart here. They've recognized the lack of reliable lockdown on the side of Yodas yeah. and just picked remaining. up mobile cores in the form then of the anti you've got to have some reliable lockdown. Five seconds Centaur remaining. Nax, I don't know. Both attempting uh, Yeah, Axe is not a bad, actually. Axe is really good here, now that you mention it. With the living armor, he's going to be team extremely team. early on. This game. Yes. That lane on the top side is looking extremely dangerous when Axe gets thrown into the mix. Crusaders go with the Legion Commander band, which isn't half bad either. It's reliable lockdown versus yeah. the anti mage. However, 10 seconds remaining. See what Crusaders picks up here. They're going to go with the Death Prophet, so there's some pushing potential of their own coming up. And Invoker. honestly, it's also a hero that can fight extremely early on in the game. There's the damage over time they were lacking. The Spirit Siphon works well versus the Living Armor. I think they've done a good job of rounding out their draft and they have a very solid shot at taking this game. They've been in a bit of a slump, Crusaders. Now is their time to pull up their socks. They're making some drastic changes in the way their draft's looking. Yo does though. They'll respond with an Invoker pickup. So we're looking at what? An offlane Venomancer here? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an offlane Venomancer while Apps is going to be running that Invoker on the middle lane. Kale, yeah, he's going to go offlane Venom. It's not very conventional, but it works every now and then. Maybe you run a dual lane with the Venom and the train. That could that could actually decimate that anti mage. Uh, for now, I'm leaning more towards the Crusaders in uh, terms of the draft itself. Uh, I'm gonna. S I mean, my guess is that they're gonna have issues dealing with this anti mage, and we've seen time and time again in this patch what a nuisance anti mage can be. That extended killing phase. Like you mentioned, and like you see, it does run some sort of a dual lane early on, pressure the anti mage as soon as possible and uh, delay his battle fury as long as possible. The good thing is that Remstar has been looking a bit shaky in the mid lane, so Kale should be fine. And uh, when Kale's not going mid, it's going to be apps in the middle lane. Apol oh, actually, they swapped it up, you're right. I, I, they, they swap again. They've done this before. They've done this in the past. Oh, yeah, there we go. They swap they again. They swap again. Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's going to be... No, they swap once more. Apps on the middle lane on that invoker. Okay. Kiel's going to be running on the off lane. Eleven's going to be playing that uh, Lich on the five position support. Kiel's Venomancer, by the way, on the off lane. Train Protector in the hands of Acme. Luna's going to be played by Shondi. And that's basically the lineup for Team Yodas. So you can still uh, pop... Uh the primal split in overgrowth. Are you sure? Yeah, I think you can. Because if I'm not mistaken, they change the way root works. You can no longer pop abilities inside of roots. Well, it says it prevents you from moving, blinking, going invincible or attacking. Invisible. Or attacking. Invisible. Okay, maybe you can then. We'll find out soon enough. Well, we got the great Indian Dota pause coming out once again. Not really sure what the damn issue is about. Alright, Vivek, quick predictions. Who do you think is going to take this one? In terms of draft, I think that the Yogas have won this. Excuse me, uh, the, the Crusaders have won this. Yeah. yeah, I want to agree with you, but Yodas have proven us wrong time and again here. Yeah? They've shown that they know how to push, that they know how to gank in the mid-game stage. My only concern for Yodas is their lack of lockdown versus their anti-mage. Think about it, mid-game Invincible goes split pushing, he's having a gala of a time on the side and there's nothing to stop him except for an overgrowth. And if if the train protector is not in the vicinity to catch that overgrowth, I don't think the invoker is enough to stop him and kill him off. There's 
the cold snap, which could help their cause, but that's going to mean that Invoker's going to have to put extra points into the boss early battle. on, which means that he's not going to have much value elsewhere on the map with those Sun Strikes. There's also the fact that Sun Strike is usually synergetic when you have additional lockdowns on your team. So it's it's the second reason why I'm uh, really calling them out on the lack of lockdowns do, here. Do you think we're going to see an overgrowth uh, into a cataclysm? It's a possibility in the late game stages. But this is the also a begins. tempting game to pick up the alacrity buff, right? Tis my beauties. Come on, everybody wants to yeah, play everybody wants to play Cataclysm. Even Sumail took those two extra arrows when the talent <laughs> was introduced. Look at what Acme is doing though. He's got the nature's guys keeping him invisible as he spots Bakemono. Shandi's in the vicinity and apps and 11 aren't too far off, but this is not a lineup that's meant to contest early on. Yeah. They're running an aggressive try, it seems, and they're giving Kale uh, the safe lane. So he should do really well versus the Panda. Are they sacking the bounty rune here? Or are they just trying to bait someone to go and take it instead? Because Bakemono is standing deep inside the dire side of the map. In fact, they're going to get the dire rune here while the radiant rune should be left for... Oh, wait a second, they actually they took the... I'm one. so sorry, that was such a brain fart moment. <laughs> so they picked up uh, three bounties there. And Abs goes back to the middle lane with just his own bounty rune. I like this play coming up from the others. Um, you gotta contest uh, the anti as soon as possible. But look at this engine, nerd spike, on point 11 dropping low. This is first blood for the Yoda. <laughs> so much for the aggressive was try. Such an easy first blood. Acme with the one punch man ability is not really able to help uh, keep them alive. No living armor, no frost armor. They know the lich is super susceptible. That's a lich with sacrifice. But they're going on Senjin now. But Senjin turns with an earth spike on Shondi, who's also been chased to the side. Senjin gets the hell away from Acme. While Shondi gets back under cover of the engine has Islam. another earth spike, but I mean, it's gonna be Hell's Gates. Engine watch. No, this is silly. He shouldn't have been walking body by himself. He's got the earth spike, he's baiting Acme. Bakimoto does have the void. The overgrowth coming up cool down into five, four. Over, you mean the nature's guys? Excuse me, apologies, the nature's guys. Then this again. Damn. Punch! This Second time, punch. Dead. Yeah. yeah. Some weird stuff coming out from Senjin. He should have just backed away under his tier 1 tower. He knew that uh, the train... The, the train <laughs> I keep calling him nature's puffer and train protector. The train protector was in the vicinity. Cool. Invincible. Uh. They are contesting his lane here, but they're not doing a fine job of it, honestly. So, the problem with how they're contesting this lane is that the lich walks into the lane with sacrifice. That's how you normally like to level prepare the lich. But when you're running in aggro try, lich will sacrifice with just a couple of range attacks. It's practically a range for all purposes. Anyway, now he's up the frost blast, so their lane becomes a little stronger. However, creep equilibrium has shifted in favor of the dire, but Shandi. That's going to mean a couple of last hits that are missed under his tower. Quite a few last hits actually missed under his tower now. The image will be pleased with that. And they're also going to be able to pull their own creep wave to the side to reset this. Good stuff coming out from Senjin. He knows what to do in a, in a try versus try scenario. Controlling the creep equilibrium is of paramount importance. And anti mage will slowly but surely get farm and levels here despite being pressured by three heroes. But... I, I don't know, I mean, anti mage. Now has to sort of lost it under his tower. He's walking into 11 himself as Acme. Acme. Overgrowth uh, didn't click. Excuse me. He's got an orb of venom as well on Acme, so. Yeah, orb of venom will boost. It's gonna hurt a lot. There is a kill possibility here, but Shandi's gonna need to get one more level for that level 3 lucent beam. They're going in on Invincible, oh, they they're doing him. a fair amount of damage, Invincible flings out, the Sun Strike is there, and it clips the anti mage. Neatly done there. That's kind of key. Shandi's gonna get a little bit more farm, they're gonna buy magic sticks and wands, and uh, they're winning this lane quite hard. Bakimono only now picks up a sentry, so they were running against an aggressive drive without vision. Meanwhile, Kale goes a solo kill on the Panda. How does that even happen? <laughs> yeah, this is not a good start. Can I take back my prediction? <laughs> <laughs> Yotas are just outplaying them across the lane. Yeah. 
Ab says he may not be winning the middle lane. In fact, he's getting squashed on the middle lane. Look at the CS difference. 19 and 13 on the Death Prophet, 9 and 3 on the Invoker. He gets a little money going his way on account of that Sunstrike kill that he got on the Anti-Mage. But this is still absolute decimation by uh, Remstar. It is nice that Sakamoto trying to run down the lemon Dashing coming in from the east. They get the Kronkin to get the custom Kronkin haze. That's slowing down the lemon a little bit. And Eleven should finally be on. Dashing walks in. Dyer's middle tower the ground and is under the attack. Shandi. He's not exactly secure under his own tower as well. That lich mid lane. In the They're side going lane. in onto the invoker. The earth spikes there. You got the spirit siphon. The double damage on the death prophet. Still want to retake your prediction, man? Oh, but top lane, Acme goes and one punches the hell out of Invincible. <laughs> this train protector, they weren't prepared for his absurd damage. When he stands next to the Luna, he even gets the Luna blessing bonus, as if he needed any more damage. You know what? You should be just for lockdown, but they kill the anti mage twice. This is a huge slip up on Invincible's part. This shouldn't be happening. Anyway, he's gone back to the bottom lane where Dashin is hanging around as well. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, they're prepping for Ash. Bakamon is a drawn win. He's got the clarity. And uh, they're slowly but surely going to get this invoker. DPs are coming in though. And Ash pops the fairy fire, which allows him to stay alive. They infuse raindrops, Meanwhile. proving to invaluable. Senjin, he's managed to catch Kale near oh, the trees. Kale's managed to catch him, actually. Yeah, Sunstrike sort of miss. Kale on a killing spree. Well, Remsa, he's been having a good game so far, but that uh, counter kill coming out of the middle lane doesn't work too well in his favor. Apps, he's still level 4, while Remsa has crossed level 6. This is just the dirtiest kind of decimation you'll see at the middle lane. I haven't seen lane. this in a while. But bottom, with the train protector's absence, Sengen knows that the Venom is in the way as well. Kale's come through, Tree Int was here, he gets the hex off, the Sun Strike connects, and Sengen gets one punched again. Acme, he's got two kills and two assists just six minutes into this game. This trade pick is working out fabulously for them. But meanwhile, top, Shanti's in trouble as well. They've got the Void Slow kicking on. They've got the Drunken Haze thrown upon him as well. Bakemono attempted a body block but ended up getting body blocked himself. Now, if they're going to dive this deep, they have to be cautious about TP rotations and they're going to back away knowing that it's too risky. Apps, despite losing the lane, he's still somehow contributing across the map uh, with his Sun Strikes. Uh, if it wasn't for that Sun Strike kill, he'd be further under level for now. But uh, yeah, this just goes to show how strong the Crusaders are winning the lane. Yeah, the thing is, Apps now has a few levels and a few points into the exhaust. So he's got more damage to sit and last hit with. Over time, Death Prophet's not going to be able to sit around in the lane too much. And if they don't start making any drastic moves, perhaps with that execution, they're looking for a tower. It could be Apps just pulling back the advantage in his favour. Remsa should consider grouping up with his teammates, but Doc looks like they just got the primus bit to try and score a kill. But the game is just huge. They got the Shandra's fairy fire, the pandas, um, well, not being controlled very well here. The fire panda doing its work. Kale doesn't have, does have the poison, no one. He could turn this around. Dashin needs to be careful. He's got Bakimoto's eight stick dead. charges. He could turn this around. Bakimono dropping him, but the clap, it hurts in and how. There's no living armor just yet up on Kale. The lead seat gonna help, but Kale's killing spree taken away. He does manage to bring down the Night Stalker. There's a Sun Strike awaiting Darshan. Surely with the poison Nova, he should be going down. The poison Nova, I don't think it should be enough. They're trying to run him down. That's just way too tanky. This is the point, the one point in Drunken Brawler plus the evasion coming out from Drunken Haze works in his favor. Darshan, he's gonna shrine up. Just barely makes it there while Acme was moving in. But up top, Eleven's getting chased now. Remstar coming in with that uh, Spirit Siphon. They'll get that kill on the ledge. And now with the Exorcism, they could take a tower on the back of this as well. Very strange that we didn't see additional TPs coming out Radiant's towards the top side. I mean, tower is under that, that chase lasted absurdly long. Lich yeah. seemed to have come in a tad bit too late to save this Venomancer. Well, Night Hammer has worn off. Uh, Bakimono did end up dying once in his first night time. Remstar still to use that exhaust to secure the tower. Invincible for now, hogging his lane. Like a somehow find his dial shooting. But all of this is free farm for Shandi. He's up to 27 on the net worth now. Yeah, he's attack. gone and checked. He did well for himself. Darshan is just running down the mid lane. He hasn't got face boots. He does have range for the clap and he's going to smack him uh, straight in the face. The living armor, enough to push him back. You've got the root coming up from Acme. Darshan doesn't have the primal split. He's certainly going to go down there. And that was the TP rotation that uh, the Moker needed a long time ago. But that was 
just disrespect coming out on the side of Brewmaster. You can't be running in like this under a tier 1 tower with uh, a TP staring in the face from the yeah. train protector. The problem is he's playing the Brewmaster as a position for Ogre. He's trying to run down heroes and uh, get a high risk, high reward. And I, I think it's more risk and less reward at this point. The bottom lane tier of 1 tower under siege, Ramstar. He's on defense duty. Bakemono also nearby. This time Bakemono's got protection. So Acme is somehow caught out. Robin is Acme on the song. He dropped an observer one behind. So Bakemono's thinking of popping a dust and going. It's, it's basically a 4 versus 2 in this bottom lane. And I really fear for Ramstar and Bakemono. Because Venomance is walking forward. Gale is running and drops his They blocked ward. him with They've a plague ward. Venomous Gale. They blocked Ramstar to some extent. Who finally goes down. Darshan TP's in as well. He's trying to run down Sean Lee. Sean Lee's Eclipse and Golda. He pops his Sal, but he's got no luck. Overgrowth, Venomous Gale, Poison Nova, everything in the kitchen sink being thrown out by Gale there. But do they have the damage? Well, there's enough for Bakemono. Splits coming up from Darshan. Throws Lich into the air. Focuses Gale. Should be able to get this skill at the very least. And with a little bit of burn from the Fire Panda, they'll take away his killing spree. Eleven still untouched. He's got the Chain Frost, but Acme is going to be run down. The nature's guys keeping him alive, and look at this. Eleven throws the chain frost, gets the kill on Sinjin, hopes to TP away, but Invincible is there and will score the kill with the mana war. Hmm. I'm not really sure who comes out on top in that fight. It's because a three on, for two. on one hand, they did get the kill on Remstar, but on the other hand, they lost Venomancer, who had a bit of a spree going on his head. Yeah, they lost Venomancer in the Lich. They... Shandi stayed alive, which was kind of crucial because Shandi was almost dead in my eyes. Yeah, but the problem is Shandi's not really farming that well this game. The anti-mage has overtaken him. That and is a little surprising and I, I don't understand that. Sure, anti-mage got that one Shandi didn't stay alive, by the way. He actually died early on. Okay, my fight recap made it... I, I saw two heroes die in the fight recap. Oh, I'm sorry. Shandi actually did stay alive. I'm, he has zero deaths this year. Yeah. I was so sure he was dead in the corner <laughs> over there. That, that's what I assumed as well, but they just gave up uh, chasing Shandi. So, what's actually a bit disappointing is... That Invincible had the harder time to lane. Shandi was given a free lane for a good amount of time. And Invincible was jungling the small camp to perform in the month. Invincible has managed to find recovery. Shandi isn't farming at the pace he should be. So here's the problem with the new Battle Fury. It takes a fair bit of effort to pick up a Demon Edge early on. And Top lane. It's gonna take uh, a lot to keep this Invoker alive. Invincible doesn't have the Mana Void. The Overgrowth committed. All eyes turn towards Acme now. Bakimono doesn't have detection. Pop the void. They're not His kidding. dust has worn off. Yeah, I don't Bakimono's see how they get this. Acme smacked. turns around and smacks Bakimono. Yeah, the, I mean, like I was saying, the problem with the Battle Fury on the anti mage is yeah. you now need to farm up 2400 gold or 2200 gold to get your demon edge. Getting that demon edge early on means you've got to stack up a lot of unreliable gold and it makes you a prime target to be ganked over and over again for the first few minutes. Yeah. They've applied plenty of pressure in the means of it. He's not going to get a standard 12 to 15 minute timing on the battle field. Maybe the 15 minute battle field could come out here. But then it's going to be a completely naked battle They've field. They've gone in and failed Darsh and he's got that blink dagger. And right. Remstar gets the kill. Chain Frost bouncing around. Darshan split into three. Bakemono will fall. He's managed to yule the Luna into the air. But look at this. The rest of the Yodas are just awaiting the Panda to uh, finally go back into his natural form. Shandi gets a kill. And now Darshan is on the run. The Earth Panda. Where is it going? Well, it's gone far enough to break away. Well, two for one again, the Venomancer being the sacrificial lamb there. But both the supports on the side of Crusaders end up dropping for it. They could consider pressing forward for a tower. I mean, they do have a shrine available to be used, but look at oh. this! Abs just getting greedy and dropping a meteor to farm in the lane on low HP. Darshan Top spanks him. Top lane. Top lane. He's going to run him down. Bakemono has a sentry for good measure. Invincible with the mana void, but Acme only got to a lot of mana. Kale, what can he do? So it's not the best for Kale, for no one. Top Acme doesn't have the overgrowth. Has it in three. Kale is coming up with Bakemono, but sent in here as well. Kale's got a plague ward on the ground. The living armor thrown upon the three and himself. Oh, the but they're going to turn towards Bakemono and Sengen dropping low. They get the kill on Bakemono. No plague ward stack Sengen, but 11 yeah. comes in from the north. They want to round down Remstar, they've got the lead seed. Darshan just jumps in, slams the ground, gets a kill, should be getting another. And make that a double for Darshan. They lose the Night Stalker, they get Acme on the Dream Protector, as well as the Venomancer. That works out beautifully for Crusaders. That fight just went Radiance on for so long, tower. Darshan it's practically walked up to the lane, jumps yeah. in with the two-man crush <laughs> and finishes the job. That, that was hilarious.
I think Dashi, he's got three kills in the past two minutes with that blink dagger. So he's doing well for himself. A lot of pandas these days seem to go back for the Midas after the blink just because of that 20 level 25 talent. Um, I've seen this in some high school pub games. I don't know if Dashi's contemplating that. Um, but yeah, he's been really impactful despite those earlier deaths where he just ran into the lane. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be against him going back for the Midas. It's not like he's going to get too much time and space to farm. They need to get that space to open the anti mid. But as I say that, at mid, Apps is in a world of trouble again. Ascended, even as the finger, if he wants to expend it, but he decides against it. Apps manages to survive for a little longer than he should have, but Darshan tanks up an entire eclipse and just walks away while shaking his panda booty. Now he's going to get body blocked by another Plague Wall from Kim, who, by the way, has been on point with this game. Yeah. He gets the kill on Darshan. That's a mega kill streak taken away. And now Senjin's about to go down as well, but Baki says enough of that, walks in forward, gets the slope of the body blocks from Apsis Ward Spirit, will thwart his onslaught. Top lane, um, actually having a little bit of fun with Rem's tiles, committed the exorcism, should be able to get this tower, but he's going to show a little bit of respect, while it seems as if the Yodas are prepping for a trade of their own. They're going to get Remstar's tier 1 in the mid lane, the Radiant Glyph comes out, Remstar just having fun with the Tame Protector, but at the end, it's a tier 1 for a tier 1. And that's the exorcism on gold down. Yeah, they kind of whipped their fortification on the dire side though, I think. Radiance middle they use it after... No, they used it on time, I'm sorry. But yeah, tier 1 for tier 1. Bakemon is coming in to piss off Acme a little bit. With the void tagged, Acme is just going to TP out in his face. While Invincible on the bottom lane with his Battle Fury will now start to accelerate his farm rate. But Apps, look at this, he's just gone in for a solo kill with a cold snap. That's clearly not going to happen. It might happen with Kale nearby. The veil upon not Invincible, engaged. nothing to cancel the TP. And you spoke of this during the draft. This um, last time around, when they were chasing Bakemono, if I'm not mistaken, they had nothing to cancel the TP. Uh, luckily, Kale came in with that Plague Ward. Otherwise, Bakemono had surely escaped. There Dyer's is a lack of lockdown, and I might come back attack. to help them. It's also a wasted effort for four Dire heroes to be on this bottom lane when there's no tier 1 tower. Radiance Unless they're going to commit to a tier 2. Attack. Unfortunately, if they do that, Remstar takes down the tier 1 on the middle lane along with Senjin in the vicinity. Apps has moved there as well. He's got the double damage rune if he wants to make a play, but there are no follow-up TPs coming in to help him just yet. Do you think anti mate should be at a neutral camp right now or pushing out the top lane? I think he should be on top. Yeah. Although he doesn't really have full vision, so it's the safer thing. I mean, he camp. saw four heroes, but now he sees them. Look at Acme. And now he goes to the Just have a look at what Acme is doing. Tower. He's just sneaky peaky like walking next to Senjin and Darshan. Providing information for his teammates as they push. Senjin will do well to drop a sentry ward, but here's the initiation. Brewmaster goes in with a clap and a split and turns his gaze over towards Shanli, who's a fair bit too tanky. They've got the split panda sending him up into the air as well. The Lich comes back down to the ground, but behind the dealing with the tree and protector, even Acme refuses to fall. That's a fairly heavy commitment coming out. While they get nothing, meanwhile, up top, Invincible dies solo to Abs, who gets the cold snap along with the alacrity hits. He just solo killed that. Uh, Anti-Mage on the back of the leveled up cold snap. Yep, that's uh, a crucial kill. They do manage to take down anti but they've got nothing to hold on. Darshan without the split. Uh, the ground, they've got the frost armor. I don't think Darshan survives. The Sunstrike will get the kill, while Bakemono walks in and dies as well. Remstar's come to only find bodies of his teammates, and he's without mana. So he's got the hurt, but they can just chase him forever. The Plague Ward hurts. 11 throws out the chain frost. Unfortunately, no bounces to the neutral. But 11, along with Chandni and that Master Madness, managed to kill Remstar. That was an unfortunate series of events. And the Crusaders have given away too much. So dead on the anti mage. Darshan getting caught out without the split. And uh, Remstar just walking in and dying after the battle had ended. That was way too much, like you said. Anti mage dying, that was crucial enough by itself. And then you had three heroes going down on the bottom lane. In addition to that, the tier 2 tower goes down. Everything goes in favor of Yoda's way there. Apps has made steady progress towards his Aghanim Sephir. He's going to have it in just about 600 more gold now. But Bakemono has a bone to pick with him. He's going to be coming in from the side. They've pinged out Apps. They'll blink They've forward onto him as well. They've got detection. Now, Apps needs to probably be considered he's putting fighting. his TP in. He's manning up. Invincible hurts with the mana void. Gets the kill, gets revenge. Much needed kill. Apps is... He got a bit free there. Walking yeah. so far out. Acme skewed up the blink dagger next. 
I don't know if I entirely agree with this. I think uh, he should have been playing that sacrificial support role. Even if he had to go for an item, it should have been something along the lines of a Glimmer Cape or a Solar Crest. I don't think the Blink Rush is really going to help out that much. Shondi, now at the top of the network charge. One could look up at this team and push. They are missing the Invoker. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Damsta, I mean, despite the good laning phase, we yet to see his impact in these team fights. He's got the yield set to complete. It's gonna help him out to some extent. So, 11 pops the smoke and puts down the observer in the sentry near the top tier 1 tower, which is where uh, you can see Shandi and Venomans are grouping up. This is some smart, calculated plays coming out from them. Even going for a tower, gives, they go in with the vision advantage, so that if at all there's a contest coming out and if at all fights about to break out, they have the vision advantage to win it. Middle tier 1 though, was taken out a while ago, Invincible continues to push mid while the rest of the Crusaders will move to the bottom lane and try and take a tier 1. Problem is, tier 2 is about to be pressured very short. And with an alacrity spawned. mask of madness, Luna, that tower is just gonna melt. Yeah. That Big glyph words. also serves multiple purposes on the offensive as well as the defensive this time around. Yeah, here one falls uh, on both sides of the map. Attack. Invincible. He's got a TP, so he's somewhat okay just hanging around. It's a good push. The question is can we Heck, the you guys are not ready. This is going up high ground. Shanti comes the Mask of Madness. Now, this is without an Ages and a lot of unreliable gold. He's going to show a little bit of a second back off after that void. I'm a little surprised that Brewmaster didn't jump in earlier. Oh, Dashing goes in. He's jumped in upon Kale. He's looking to split, but the Soul Snap just hurts. They popped the Eclipse on top of the Overgrowth. The Venomous Gale as well as the Poison Nova. That's a little bunch to them, but Remstar popped the hurt. He could turn right back. The problem is that Invincible is going to get it here too as well. And Nyodas, they realize that they're not making the better trade here. Kale, what's he pass Invincible there? So that was a calculated and a practice play. It had to be. It was a premeditated play, uh, for lack of a better word. You had the Darshan Brewmaster blinking in. No stuns on the side of uh, Yodas, but they stop him from primal splitting with a Lucent Beam and follow it up with a Cold Snap. Once they had the Cold Snap and they throw damage over time upon him, there's no way he breaks out of it without a BKB. Fantastic stuff coming out from Yodas. Just controlling Darshan and forcing out a buyback from him this early on. It's going to hurt quite a bit. Especially now that the Luna is about to pick up a next big item, which is going to be the Mantis time. Mm -hmm. Apps, he's got the Axe, Septic Tis complete. He's could have queued up uh, a Yules. Uh, hoping to keep himself alive and also have the luxury of setting up solo kills if need be. Good aggressive boarding coming out. Uh, from the Yodas, what's worth noting is that sentient has been on top of the game, he de-warded in this clip ward and he's also got vision back in this clip. The Invincible though, it looks like his farm has hit a bit of a roadblock. He's at 9.5k net worth which isn't half bad, however... However... He's uh, building towards the Manta style next. Eleven and the rest of the boys, they're grouping up uh, ah, the bottom half. Focus on level 15. So we're not looking at a highlight range just yet. But Shanley's farming away at the tower. The next fight and then let's see what happens. Uh fourth spirit, black key upon the Luna. They're maxed out. So they might hurt a bit. Dashin goes in. This time there's no gold snap, no loot. They moved onto the Luna, quick post up, used onto the invoker. But where is the rest of the Crusaders? The silence whips on air, and that means that's gonna run. Where's the detection? I don't see it. Bug mode is going to back the game for Fortune back the overgrowth as well. And now they're focusing their attention towards Remsa. Who pops an age group and dodges the point two on both teams are disengaged. Remsa's popped the exhaust in and um, yeah, this this is a good for the Crusaders. Not the game is not dead for the process and you are IP. Has some lockdown. That's the finger up on Shandi. Darshan blinks in, but his tier 3 has been brought down. Hack made the warrior. 
controlled by that earth spike and brought down by Invincible. Abs still to invoke anything impactful. Shondi running away with the urn upon him. Finally goes down to bark him on his urn. Abs drops the ice wall. Kale is poison over on cooldown. The EMP on the ground. The earth spike going to control the invoker. Screams from the dugout and Invincible giving chase. Kale will finally fall. It's a double kill for Invincible. They got the tier 3, but I don't know. that. That was just the worst kind of kitchery of fights I've ever seen from both teams. That that was horrible. That was, I mean, I don't know which team was worse in that fight, but honestly, <laughs> Invincible comes out on top ever so slightly because of the jump in past uh, beyond the, beyond enemy lines. He walks away as the clear victor of that fight. You can now see him on top of the net worth charts, and this is where the slow and steady decline begins for the side of Yodas. They're not going to have too much to deal with the Lincoln's anti-mage. They're not going to have too many ways to deal with the Brewmaster who manages to get the split off almost every single time. And Death Prophet, she's basically there to break the buildings after Invincible's done the heavy lifting in the fights. It's getting slightly difficult for Yodas. Their, their response to this might have been BKBs on the Luna, maybe even uh, Apps just waiting for the Yule Scepter before going into the last fight. But all, none of it is going to matter if they don't have the vision advantage. They're going to need a war on the slope the next time they fight this and they're going to need an Aegis in their pocket. Yeah, so they've taken down the tier 3, they could move on to take down a Shrine and possibly move on to Roshan. I mean, that's that's the real victory there for the Yodas. But the problem is, like you mentioned, Invincible didn't die, he's got a lot of net worth. He's uh, leading uh, the net worth by 2,000 gold. I don't know, man. Bakemono has been a little underwhelming this game to me. Mm -hmm. Instant smoke coming out uh, from the crusade. 25 minutes and he's walking about with just an urn and face boots. He's fallen really far behind. Attack. He's at level 12, which is all right, but... Well, they have the darkness, which is probably why they're going to pop the smoke and look to go. But can you see the indecision in Crusaders? Yeah. They pop a smoke, they barely go up their slope. They say, nah, never mind. You know what? There's a wave at mid. Can Remstar crit swarm that quickly so that then we can go and farm a little more under cover of smoke? That's so not what the bloody smoke is for. They bloody waste for the smoke. But... I mean, they could possibly get. Now they know where the Yodas are. I'd like to see them take this. Yodas long can't path. can't push this. Though. They they just cannot consider going straight so up. I, I, I mean, yeah, the problem Sunday. is Invincible is going to rax them before this. Yeah. So let's just TP back now. Invincible could just blink in and kill Lich if he wants. To. But, but the ice armor he's got back up. Invincible constantly uh, putting in, uh, the Yodas in a catch 22 sorts. Yeah, but you've got to remember, if they can afford to take a little bit of chip damage, Living Armor will heal the tower back up, so they're not too worried about the tower going down to about a half HP. They can heal it up bit by bit. It's only two points in the Living Armor as of now. Which is very strange, to be honest. I mean, I'd like to see him max that out, as opposed to maxing the EDC. Yeah, same here. I mean, the Living Armor is only strong early on, right? Towards the later stages of the game, it's okay, but it falls off. Invincible. Still making good progress with his items. He's, like we pointed out earlier, he's taken the lead scan. in terms of net worth. He's now at 15,000 net worth in his favor. And he's got a butterfly queued up, so no Lincoln Sphere for him. Just a straight up butterfly. I think that's what works. I mean, he shouldn't be too worried about the meteor damage, given that he's got the spell shield online. Do you think the BKB is the right choice? I think so. Okay. It's a lot of the control coming out from the lion and the... Darshin caught with the cold snap. The overgrowth is there. Chain frost as well. Darshin won't get the primal split off. Now that's an anti-mage illusion. The real anti-mage didn't manage to get away. <laughs> or the real anti-mage was never there. But they throw a whole lot of spells. They press all of their buttons, buttons on that true master. I mean, it's almost as if they peeked into each other's computers and pressed the other players' buttons as well. But they can't get Roshan because of that. Is that what they have to? Yeah. I'm going to move to the Rosh pit. There's Roshan. There's Alacrity. There's Pinks coming out. They're looking like they want to smoke and go, but... This is when you need a smoke. Has Senjin got one? No. He's got a Blink Dagger. The problem... Bakimono has one. So the problem with everyone on the side of Yodas going into the Rosh pit is that Invincible continues to push out the top exactly. lane. So even after they take Roshan, they're not going to be able to push down a lane immediately. And Equilibrium it, will be controlled. It's a little bit of a pity that the Korean didn't bother healing up his tier 3 tower with the living armor. The tier 3 still stands at RPG. What's the it point? Up. What is Go the point of having living armor if you're not going to use it? Exactly. Illusion. Now he's going to start. Okay. 
but rinse and repeat, invincible. Takes them all to one side, TPs down to the other and starts pushing again. You can see Bakemono just being greedy about these bounty runes 28 minutes in. He's going up onto the cliff and picking them up and he's not being punished for them either. It, it is night time. They've got a smoke, but uh, they don't, okay. Bakemono popped a smoke by himself. Not sure what the plan is. They've been doing quite a bit of this, to be honest. Just using them to go plant walls. But unfortunately, Bakemono has no walls this time around. I, I think he just misclicked it while trying to swap items from his backpack. I am not sure what's going on. Dyer's middle tower Levin is under has attack. To push stuff that's, uh, gonna help Dyer's uh, middle tower life. has fallen. And, Radiant's uh, bottom Yoda shrine just, uh, is under pushing attack. Pushing down the bottom lane. Eleven has a TP. Akme's got a TP, so they all got Dyer's TPs uh, to get back in the car. Uh, Proves to be too much of an issue. Yeah, the Avengers are not so kind of knows how secure it is. Making this risky play by pushing the top lane by himself. Unfortunately, Apps is already here to defend, and Radiant's he's got the boots of Travis to go back and join his teammates on the bottom side so of the map. Invincible takes down with your two attempts while on the bottom side. They're pushing two out of three lanes, and they're pinging out mid frantically. Lich, he's calling for the defense. Bakke Mono's walked up and started right like clicking. I like the plan, but no Invincible. I guess he could have held on for a second, but look, it's, it's turning out to be a base race. I'm sorry. Not much of a base no, race going because back to Remtas come back to defend. Uh, Apps is left on defense duty, so they should know that the Yodas are working with the uh, planting of the If you don't go YOLO now, when do you? Senjin on the sides, uh, on his own, warning him to be on the block. Shandi's moved up, he's uh, pounding away on the rack. Almost forcing the Crusaders to look for a fight and not split one. There's the Eclipse, and Invisible immediately runs the hell out of there. Finger of Death committed on the Luna, and it's a split. You can take as the Pandas were running in, but that's the Dina, and then the Ice Ball. It's more of a problem, but they have to pick up one. It's Acme. It's Acme all by itself. They will get the kill in the Shade Protector. He doesn't pop his overgrowth either. Now, Axe is here. Um, or rather the invokers here. And drops an EMP, Darkman jumps in with the clap, Shandu is the master manager for the second damage in Winston says hello, jumps in, but a quick deafening blast and the meatball ensures that Shandi gets to make that three with Kale coming in. And that's a buyback instantly on the Rev Prophet who's in costume and is on cool map. That was the app show all the day. He just waited, bided his time, got a three man meteor deafening blast and turned that fight back in their favor. Shandi's ages was triggered, but now with the alacrity in the mask band, if they take out the many barracks before the fortification kicks in, the glaives are just ripping them apart inside their own base. And Bakemono comes out of the defense. Kale goes in, Kale just four stops in. What is he thinking? Gets silenced by the Night Stalker. Immediate Manda for by Invincible, who just blinks backwards. That's the defense, uh, not being mounted successfully. You're looking at uh, Shondi going back for the range barracks. Shondi senses he can go. I mean, if he had somebody to help him with the oh, lockdown, yeah. This is Bakimono dead. Sun strike, picture perfect. And Amps uh, manages to get the, melee, the range barracks as well. Alright, the lane of barracks now taken apart. I feel like it would have been a lot smarter for Crusaders to not fight this and just go looking for Radiant's two lanes of barracks themselves. Yeah. They could have pushed this one quite com comfortably with anti mage pushing through the middle lane. You had the Bakemon and Nightstalker nearby. You had Remstar on the top lane as well. I just don't see why they chose to pick a fight instead. And now they're marching down mid. They haven't got ages, but they're a team that's known to take calculated risks. Radiant's and they sense they have a net worth advantage. Attack. Any new items flying out? Radiant's I'd like to see Shanti go high ground only after he picks up his butterfly. If that's what he's looking for. Shanti with the butterfly? He, I mean, he's he, yeah, he's queued up the butterfly. He's quick by. The courier is at the uh, oh, shop. You said you want to see him go what? He's queued up the butterfly. He's almost got down okay. on the Luna. Yep. Um, now, he doesn't have the quarter staff. But hey, he's going to pick up. Ah, Tornado, that's gonna clip Remsa. This is kinda of painful. EMP on the floor, the EMP doesn't correct, takes too long. But John Lee walks up to the high ground. Atul asking his team to fight forward. The Earth Spike and the Force Down. Jumping cat is the tail. Sean Lee with the living armor getting picked up. He's got the butterfly complete. Kale picks up an axe and then what is Invincible doing? I am not sure. He's standing outside his own base. Everybody's doing the dark nice. 
Shanti goes in. There's a clap on Shanti Darshan looking for the split, but they've controlled him. That's one now. There's 50 points. He's got the buyback, and he's got to. Remsa, he's moved ahead, yield up into the air. The physical damage just too much. That's not how you do it, Remsa. Remsa dead for 84, and Bakimono runs in, tries to run out, but can't do so. Invincible in the midst of four heroes, manages to flick the hell out of there, and Darshan is in battle. He's split into three. He's searching for someone to control. Kale controlled with the void. Shondi, what's he up to? He's not focusing on the barracks. Bakimono caught in the roots from the field. Will take damage from the Vezin with Gale. And Kale just focusing down the Night Stalker. Darshan with the finger coming in from Senjin manages to bring down Akme. Akme buys back to the living armor. He's still alive in these fights. And Shondi, as well as Levin, just focusing yeah, the barracks. This looks like it's over. I saw Ab steeping back to the base and popping a Sunstrike to finish off the anti mage while he was heading back to the base. That was the final nail in their coffin. With both the high impact holes down on the side of Crusaders, Shondi, 11 and Kale just do well, textbook cleanup duty here as they're gonna go for the final lane of Barracks. Crusaders, they've been beaten here and Yodas will continue their winning streak. New Cypher in the second round, Robin.